Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. On the agenda tonight we had a lot of requests for this one. It's Lindsay Buckingham and his performance of Big Love from Soundstage. So let's get Lindsay up on screen and see how he gets on. Looking out for love in the night so still. Oh, I'll build you a kingdom in that house on the hill. Looking out for love, big big love. You said that you love me. That you always will Oh, you paid me to keep you In that house on the hill Looking out for love Big, big love Just going to quickly jump in before we get too far into the solo because I need to mention how many things are going on at once here. I always say that playing and singing at the same time doubles the difficulty, whereas I think you could probably say that this triples the difficulty the way that Lindsay's playing, because he's playing fingerstyle here, and the way that he's hammering those root notes on every beat of the bar, it's just relentless with that thumb, and then he's got that counter melody going at the same time, that he's playing up the top end of the guitar with the first finger and the second finger. Lindsay actually didn't have any lessons or can't read music. He's one of those guys that just listened and worked it all out for himself and came up with his own way of playing. Generally live, this fingerstyle way of playing is what he's known for, but not standard fingerstyle. We're not being strict here. Like I said, he never had any lessons. He didn't really have anyone telling him how to do it. So he's using his thumb here to hit those root notes, but sometimes he actually strikes down with the nail of his first finger or his second finger. Sometimes when he's playing electric guitar as well. I have done another video on Lindsay with Fleetwood Mac and you could see the way that he's striking down on the strings in that video. It's great that he's got that lead vocal in there as well. He's almost just the full band by himself and that's pretty much what Lindsay is. He has done tracks in the past on albums where he's played all of the instruments but he certainly portrays that through the guitar here because we've got so many elements going on that driving rhythm in the background almost like a drummer just keeping that constant beat going on every beat of the bar. You've got then the lead lines at the top end of the guitar and then you've got the vocals as well. So he's literally rolling everything together here. This is actually a great shot that we've got here because we can see the guitar that he's playing. You can make out the Gibson on the bottom there but also if you look closely you'll see that it's a Chet Atkins. That's Chet Atkins signature on there. So this is a Gibson Chet Atkins CE guitar and Lindsay is very much influenced by Chet Atkins. He used to listen to him a lot but of course he didn't know how Chet Atkins was playing so Lindsay would come up with with his own version of what Chet Atkins would play. So that's where the thumb and the first finger comes in to get that similar sound. But it's great that Lindsay went down his own road and really came up with his own style, his own technique and his own sound. And he's one of these guys that absolutely puts everything into the melody of the song and the overall composition. It's not about getting a guitar solo in a song to show off what you can do. It's about the fact that if the song needs a solo to say something, then Lindsay will put one in there. And we know, of course, Lindsay was a massive part of Fleetwood Mac and he's unfortunately not there anymore. Perhaps the biggest compliment you can get as a guitar player is when you do leave a band, when the band then have to rehire someone, they hire two people to do your job. And that's exactly what's happened on two occasions, I think. When Lindsay has left Fleetwood Mac on both occasions, um, Mick Fleetwood's then got two guitarists in to do what Lindsay does. So it just shows how much work he actually goes through on the guitar. Like I'm pointing out here, we've got so many things going on just on one guitar, but then to lay that vocal over the top of it as well, it's just seriously impressive and don't let it fly under the 
the radar the amount of technical ability that Lindsay's got. We'll get into the Fleetwood Mac history after we've watched the end of this performance. What a great performance that was. And just the way that Lindsay just pulls this off so effortlessly. And it's so cool because in the chorus of this track, we've got such a melodic hook in the vocal. I mean, the vocal is absolutely insane in terms of how catchy it is. And it's so well written and it's so cool. And people dream of being able to write hooks this well, not only just having a vocal hook in the chorus, but then to back that up with the really melodic finger style run that he has that's then like a response to the call of the vocal. Just the journey that Fleetwood Mac have been through and Lindsay was such a massive part of that and the overall sound. And if you don't know, Fleetwood Mac actually started out as a blues band in the late 60s. We had Mick Fleetwood and Peter Green was in there, also Jeremy Spencer and Danny Kerwin actually joined in later. But just to focus on Lindsay in 1972 with his then girlfriend Stevie Nicks he then started recording demos and they both did together then went over to Los Angeles to try and get a record deal or at least chase a record deal and they actually got one a year later in 1973 but unfortunately that was to Polydor and unfortunately with their album it didn't do very well and the industry being so cutthroat as it was then and it is now they literally got dropped pretty much straight away from Polydor Records off the back of this first album. Having been dropped, Lindsay then joined up with Don Everly's backing band and he actually sang Phil Everly's vocal parts as well, of course, the Everly Brothers. So that's what he was doing to try and earn a little bit of money to put food on the table. But he and Stevie Nicks were actually still working on demos in the studio and they were in a studio in California and as luck would have it, Mick Fleetwood was in the area just checking out studios for, I guess, potential recording projects. And at the time, he actually heard Frozen Love that's been played in the studio because that's where Lindsay and Stevie had been getting down some demos but that was from their first album. Mick was really impressed and he said who are these guys on the recording and then the guy said actually they're just in the other room working on demos at the moment so they happened to be in the studio at the same time as Mick Fleetwood was just checking out the studio so they got introduced and then actually later on in 1974 Bob Welch left Fleetwood Mac and that's when Mick Fleetwood gave Lindsay the call and said, look, we're looking for a guitarist. Can you please play guitar for us? And then Lindsay said, I will do, but only if my girlfriend can join the band as well. And this is where Lindsay and Stevie really added their sound to Fleetwood Mac. At the end of the 60s, it was just really a bluesy outfit that they had going on. Whereas when Lindsay and Stevie then turned up and started putting in a lot more melodic content and almost mainstream commercial, almost pop sounds to the band, that's when rumors came out and absolutely was a massive hit. And 
the lead single from that album was Go Your Own Way, which of course is a Lindsay Buckingham track. So they literally just took over the reins and totally steered Fleetwood Mac in a more commercial direction. Rumours was actually released in 1977 and in 79 we had Tusk and in 82 we had Mirage. But then by the time 87 came around where Tango in the Night was released, all of the members of the band were having quite a lot of success independently, especially Stevie Nicks, away from Fleetwood Mac. And of course, during this time, Stevie and Lindsay actually broke up. So when the 1987 album Tango in the Night was released, they were no longer. And that's actually when Lindsay then left Fleetwood Mac because they hadn't actually been together, Lindsay and Stevie, during that whole kind of writing process. It must have been an absolute nightmare of a situation to have to go in every day and work with someone musically that you used to be in a relationship with and you're almost contractually bound to have to see this person every day and work with them and I think certainly it took its toll on Lindsay and that's why he needed that clean break. And interestingly actually on that album Tango in the Night again the first single was Big Love so the track that we've got here which is a Lindsay Buckingham track and I think Lindsay was actually in the process of writing his third solo album at the time when they got to together to do this Fleetwood Mac album and a lot of the songs or at least three or four or five of the songs that he was going to use on his own album then got put onto that Fleetwood Mac album and um, this is one of the things that I can't help but think about Lindsay that he's writing so much and he's a multi-instrumentalist he can get down everything himself in the studio if he wants to he's now being known under this collective term of Fleetwood Mac and the drummer being called Mick Fleetwood, whereas Lindsay's putting in so much of his heart and soul into the band. But Lindsay Buckingham, a great player, great singer, and a great songwriter as well. He's just the all-round artist, and maybe under that umbrella of Fleetwood Mac, you might not have given him the respect that he deserves in terms of how much he added to that sound, and just what an accomplished musician and just overall artist that he is in his own right. So maybe it's good that he gets to spread his wings a little bit and step out of that shadow of Fleetwood Mac and just get a little bit of attention, put a spotlight on Lindsay Buckingham as an artist. But thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at, and keep suggestions coming in the comments below let me know what you guys think and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i'll see you guys at the next one